events um, organised by Stop Climate Chaos, World Development Movement, WWF, People and Planet in Scotland, NIDOS, Friends of the Earth, Jubilee Scotland. Good coalition of organisations that want to provide a forum for people like you to ask questions around Scotland's future and the independence referendum in September. And I'll hand over to our esteemed chair, Judith Robertson. I'd go for giving this lineup Patricia Marwick style event, so um, let's look out for that. A question um, from Robbie Watt via Twitter. Um, how does an independent Scotland square its climate targets with reliance on North Sea oil and gas? You're looking at an industry and economies which are balanced precariously on the value of that industry, an industry that's profoundly overvalued. You're looking at a carbon bubble, and when that bubble bursts, and it will, it will cause an economic catastrophe that will make the 2008 recession look like a broken piggy bank. This is a crucially urgent economic issue for the world to, to resolve. Why do I think an independent Scotland uh, is, is more likely to achieve this? I think it is because of the scale, because of the unsustainable scale and reliance uh, on that industry that Scotland would face the greater urgency of moving away from its economic reliance uh, on fossil fuels. I, I kind of sympathise with Patrick's ambition, but in the kind of dramatic nature um, of how Patrick describes it, I have some um, difficulty with. Um, this is about making sure that we have this transition to a new sustainable form of living, um, which we can take people with us, um, that people buy into, um, that is going to be sustainable. Um, that's what we're really looking to try and achieve. And although we'd much rather move much quicker and you know, move towards that kind of new sustainable way of living, there are people um, who find that dramatic change quite difficult. So we need to make sure that when we do this, we do this um, in a responsible uh, manner. And uh, I'm Martin Mayers. I'm an environmental scientist. <laughs> I want convinced that a sensibly run UK government or a sensibly run Scottish government would solve this. And I am a floating voter. This is one of the issues that I will decide how to vote on. Who would like to start to convince the gentleman in the black jacket? This is the first um, independence referendum um, meeting I've done where the environment is not even centre stage but mentioned full stop. So maybe there's a challenge about breaking this debate out of the environment world and making this a more mainstream art argument and using the chance of this, this debate that we're having over the next six months to make environment one of the key issues for all of us. Oh. Thank you. Um, well, well Mar Martin, you, you raise a very important point. I mean, you mentioned we're heading for two degrees. Sadly, I think we're heading well beyond two degrees as, as things stand. I mean, if you take the limited number of countries that have put pledges on the table and uh, look at the, the collective impact they will have, uh, we're sadly heading towards maybe a four degree scenario at the moment. So there's, uh, it, it is imperative, and to pick up a point that, that, that uh, Sarah has said, I mean, I wasn't in Parliament at the time the 2009 Act went through, clearly, but uh, I've been hugely impressed and have spoken uh, passionately about this when I've been in international for about the fact we did have uh, unanimity across Civic Scotland, our trade unions, our churches, uh, business community, very important that they were on board and uh, didn't try and block you know, mes measures to to have a high level of ambition and there was that unanimity in the Parliament. I think it's really important. My next question um, is from, by email, in fact I had it, well I was given it earlier, um, from Steve from Glasgow um, and it's on a slightly different subject. So banks, which market themselves as Scottish, such as RBS, still have an unhealthy obsession with continuing to invest in fossil fuels. Absolutely. <laughs> Despite all that we know about climate change. Will either independence or remaining in the union help to control the banks? I would hope uh, that uh, an independent Scotland would send ministers to Europe who would advocate very strongly for that measure uh, rather than what the, the UK government ministers have been doing uh, of, uh, of doing everything that they can to stymie it. But you know, it, it does come down to the, the question about how accountable the, the market economy is, how unaccountable it has become opportunity to talk about what we think banking should look like for the future. Um, for my money, um, I think the establishment of the Green Investment Bank in Edinburgh was a really good thing. 
Um, it lets us use the renewables technology in Scotland, the knowledge we've got, the legal knowledge we've got. Mm. To tweets and retweets about air pollution. The question is, people die early every day, in, every day in Scotland from air pollution. Can and how may a yes vote make a difference? Um, if Scotland decides that uh, we have a higher priority in tackling air pollution um, than, than if that's a decision we take and, and it's higher priority than perhaps the UK would put on it, then we have uh, an opportunity to influence if you have a direct voice at the top table. I mean, I've sat through um, in uh, at least one uh, environment council I attended on behalf of the Scottish Government a uh, discussion about uh, vehicle emission standards. I'm very alarmed at the reports about radioactive nuclear waste being dumped in this country. They're in the Herald about the MOD, how they have total immunity to dump nuclear waste in the Clyde. Uh, down at Dundrennan, the MOD from their firing range have been sending shells of depleted uranium uh, from there into the sea. Maybe if we were to uh, take out a, a lawsuit against the UK government and win some money back from that basis, could we use it for community en energy projects in the nearest affected neighbourhoods? So this is a fairly toxic issue, potentially. Um, Sarah, would you like to start on this one? Yeah, I, I think we need more transparency. I think we need a strong environmental protection agency, which is SEPA. But I also think, you know, we have got a shared collective responsibility for all of these issues. We're part of the UK. We're part of a country that has um, taken decisions. And no, I don't think I would sue the UK government. I would want to now actually have more transparency in these issues. It's, it's an issue that's been raised in Fife in terms of Recife. Um, it's not just an issue in terms of um, nuclear waste, in terms of of weaponry. There's also long-term legacy in terms of our nuclear plants that I think we have to make sure we have transparency on as well. Those who've been uh, in government at UK level do need to take a bit of responsibility for the actions that have happened under their watch. I hope that this wouldn't end up with uh, you know, uh, you know, one government suing another, as you suggest. But if there is a yes vote and Paul's colleagues his party will be leading the negotiation. It's going to be minister to minister. I hope that they are willing to accept guidance and context from a, a broader range of interests than just their party interests during that period. During that negotiation, if there's a yes vote, I believe the environmental harm and the clean-up costs need to be understood as the responsibility of the UK government when we're looking at uh, assets and liabilities, about how that division, that fair division should happen. And the UK government, I believe, should be told in no uncertain terms that it needs to take responsibility for the consequences of decades of environmentally irresponsible action. Very strong difference there will be in an independent Scotland versus a, a position where we stay in the UK is we will have a written constitution in an independent country. We have the opportunity to enshrine environmental protection in that constitution and I would certainly say that's going to be a democratic process and I would invite those who care about the environment to contribute to that process when we are an independent country and ensure we do not repeat these kind of mistakes when we have responsibility for our defence force and responsibility for our key strategic sites across the country. If communities have land reform and have access to land and local resources and buildings that feels like a really positive way forward so I'd like to know where you each stand on that agenda. Um, they don't have the ability to raise the majority of the money they spend. If you don't control the purse strings, then you can't determine your own destiny. Just like what we would argue for the Scottish Parliament, we think the Scottish Parliament should raise the majority of the money that it spends, because if you can control the purse strings, you can control your future. But you can do much of what Patrick was wanting to, to achieve with through the powers um, of devolution. <laughs> Well, I thought we've had an excellent debate tonight and from my perspective actually a lot of the environmental issues, the big challenges in the environment, actually it's not about where the border lies, it's about what European policy says and about what we do at the local level in Scotland. All of those things demand a Scottish government that's fully engaged on tackling climate change and creating 
uh, social justice and making sure that environmental justice is a top priority. And for me, I don't think separation helps us with that agenda. I think it's a diversion. We really need to focus on what we can do now in Scotland to make sure that Scotland's not just a greener place, but it's a fairer place as well. A transition to a sustainable Scotland is not going to be easy. It's not going to be achieved overnight. It requires a transformation of our society, our economy and our politics. If I was convinced that that was about to happen in the context of the UK, I might even be voting no, but I see no prospect of that happening. If Scotland really wants to make that transition, if Scotland wants to show what a small sustainable country can look like, we have to take responsibility. We have to take responsibility for making the decisions about Scotland's future here in Scotland. That's why I'll be voting yes. We know that climate change is a global challenge. It's something that every citizen on the planet needs to engage in. And with the United Kingdom, I believe we've got better clout in the world in order to try and influence people in far-flung parts of the world. That urgent action is needed now. We also have the best of both worlds because we have much of the legislation and responsibility devolved to the Scottish Parliament. So we can take local action as well as global action with our power in the world, our clout in the world, but the devolved responsibilities we have to Scotland. So I think with the environment, there is no doubt that we're better together. Well, in the 18th of September, people have a choice about two futures, and uh, with an independent Scotland, we have a chance to enshrine in a written constitution, environmental protection for the first time. We have an opportunity for Scotland, which is a country that prides itself on being a world leader in both uh, climate policy, but also in renewable energy, to take a seat at the top table amongst the green growth group of countries in Europe, and to really push the agenda for higher ambition in the international climate change talks. We want to be able to be a country that has a role as a good global citizen and our important agenda of climate justice is something that we can take forward to try and help developing countries.